I'm about to feed them to the sharks right now. Get them hype right now. Yeah. You know the ground is up. Yeah. Everybody that trains, you know the game. Yeah. So let's get it. Uh. Slap it up, bump it, and roll. Hey. Yeah, that's the way that it go. Ain't no better way to better yourself in this game. You're feeling the growth. That's, real. that's time on the map. We put in the work. Believe it ain't easy, I know. You know. But we train for the love of the game, the love of the art. Now slap it up, bump it, let's roll. Let's roll. Welcome to episode 103 of the BJJ Campaign Podcast. My name is Jeff Boone. I'm an A3, blue belt, four stripes. Phil Kors, A2, purple belt, zero stripes. Whoa, purple yeah. belt. First, I thought for sure you were going to screw that up. You didn't even attempt to do it in our test recording. Yeah, I just wanted to just throw it out there and see what happens on a first try live. You know? Nice try. Nice job. Good job. Thanks. So let's go into Philly, the first and most important The elephant subject. in the room. Jeff got a sauna. <laughs> I did get a sauna. And it's freaking awesome. Uh, no, the Dan and her death squad, the breakup. That's right. The iconic Dan and her death squad. Yep. And they're all still together. And no, they're not. There's just two squads now. It's the B team yep. and new, new wave jujitsu. Yeah. I was assuming he left because of the name that he just wouldn't be associated <laughs> with that name because it was so terrible. I thought that's why he left. No, it's Gordon Ryan, Gary Tonin, and Danaher in Austin. In Austin or and Austin? In Austin. With Nikki or no? No. Why? No. So so Nikki, Ethan Krellenstein, um, Craig Jones, and uh, Nikki Rod uh, all stayed down in Puerto Rico. Interesting. They love that that uh, island life, man. Yeah. There's just two. Can't get enough of two it. Two squads now. No, there's no Dan Hurd death squad anymore. It's New Wave Jiu Jitsu and the B team. Yeah. Craig Jones put out there if you want to be second in a competition, this is your team to come to. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Great marketing. Nobody's marketing for second place, you know? Yeah. He's got, he's got, a, he's got a corner on that market. That's a good point. <laughs> I saw the memes that he was sent in to break up the team. Who? Craig Jones. Really? I yeah. hadn't seen those. Yeah. And it's under, send him in and join and then break him up. <laughs> he definitely did not break them up. They, everyone loves Craig Jones. Uh, but I did share quite a few memes <laughs> of the whole, whole breakup there. So go to the, uh, the Facebook page. Yeah, it folks. made it sound like his first post, like I read it and I assumed that everybody was going to kind of go their separate ways. And there's just two teams now. So Yeah, that's what it seems like, right? Yeah. So like nothing really changed as far as I'm concerned. They're also the same. Yeah, it changed. Who's going to like... Okay, I guess I guess you could say. Well, who knows, man? Craig Jones and Nikki Ryan would be the main instructors on the B team. Like they don't have a mind like Danaher there. Mm -hmm. You know, what's that do to what? How's that? How's that change the progression? Or does it matter? Craig was always on an island. Well, yeah, but he, Craig Jones got considerably better whenever he joined the uh, the team. Considerably. Yeah. Do you think it's because Gordon Ryan's done competing and just wants to? Dude, have you seen him? He's not done competing. He's freaking jacked now. Mm -hmm. He's able to eat. They're saying now that it's not the... Um, uh, what was it? What do you remember? The stomach issue. Yeah, I don't the, know the name it, of it. It was not that. He's seen a doctor in California now who actually, I think, is going to get him on the right track. But it wasn't where he'd lost peristalsis and there is, you know, he was, it was tough for him to eat. It subsided a lot, and he's also got a doctor in California that I think is going to get him straightened out. And if that happens, it's going to be so great. Mm -hmm. Did you see that meme? Of uh, you know, you know the guy that's behind the tree that's rubbing his hands together and yeah. licking his lips. Do you see that one with Galval? Did I post that one? 
I don't know. I don't think so, but that's funny. When he hears about the DDS breaking up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. That's great. Well, he didn't he commit to doing the super fight as soon as Gordon retired, right? No, he actually committed um, like a month before to to Mo. So before Gordon even said anything about retirement, he, oh, he, he was committed do to it? doing it. Yeah, that was a that was a big. Uh, people were just making shit that shit up. That was that was Mo, who's also really good friends. With, I mean, he's the one who brought DDS initially down to Puerto Rico because that's where where he lives. But Mo. Jassum, I think is his name, and he's uh, he's he's who puts on ADCC, and he said he said no. Andre reached out to him. It was at least a month before Gordon had said anything about not competing. Why are they going to Austin? Because uh, because uh, I think because um, Gordon loves Texas, and I've I seen think, that movie. Huh? I've seen that movie. What? Gordon loves Texas. Is that really a movie? No. Oh. It sounds like that porno. <laughs> it does. Uh, Debbie does Dallas. Gordon loves Texas. <laughs> uh, um, no, I think I think it's just, and they've just had really. First off, I think that it, for obvious reason, in that whenever they're opening up a gym and W and O is running every other week in Austin, putting on super fights on yeah. who's number one on on flow grappling. I mean, it makes sense that they're not always traveling. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how easy or hard it is to get to Austin from, from, uh, Puerto Rico, but I would say it's at least one connection, you know, cause you probably fly, fly into Dallas, Fort Worth, then to Austin. Um, but so, so that makes it easier to travel. And, you know, I just think, I think he, they were very real, well received. They've done several, um, but, you is, know, all their is similar Dallas and Austin close. No, no, Dallas Texas and Austin so are big. not close. Like it's, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how, but they're not close. They are a flight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure a small, a, a short flight, but I think it is a flight. I think San Antonio is closer to Austin. It's like an hour away, I think. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's, that's the obvious reason. I think there's, you know, a lot of people in Austin. I think that, you know, it, it, it uh, I think it's a good move for him. I, I was surprised when it wasn't Florida or Texas to begin with, whenever they made the first move. So, mm. so that's the update. Yeah. So nothing really changed. They just Every, got two locations and some people are going to train in a different spot, but everything's changed. I'm sure they'll be back together within six months. Who do you think the strong personality was in the group that, uh, you know, cause Danner, whenever he announced it, he's got, he said, you know, it's tough with strong personalities, you know, to always get along and that, who do you think he was referring to? What do you mean? What the breakup? Did you not read his, uh, some people wanted that to long, leave and some people not wanting to leave. You mean just that not everybody got along. I didn't take it as people didn't get along. Oh, there was that. There was definitely that in the post. Yeah, there was definitely that. For sure. I didn't. I didn't read that at all. I'm going to write an essay on it. So, um, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, for sure, there was. All right. Well, you say so. I think it was Nicky Rod. I'm just spreading a rumor. You think Nicky Rod was spazzy? Oh, I don't think. I mean, I think he's just no. I mean. You saw the freaking rear naked choke defense that he does. I mean, there's nobody. There's very few people in this world that can do that. Mm -hmm. Just for the folks. Well, you want to say it, Phil? Because I mean, I think it's easy. Do that one all the time. I just backflip out of it off my butt. (laughs) That's basically his defense. Backflip out of your rear naked choke. That's not easy. Um. But. uh, Again, I'm just starting rumors. I have no idea who the strong personality was. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. And now, and also now, uh, J Rod, Nicky Rod's um, brother, is training with him down there, too. Oh. And he's like, I think he's like 18. Mm -hmm. I've not heard of him. I don't. You haven't? He's a miniature version of Nicky Rod. Yeah. Just not enough time on the. 
Vitamins. Oh, I think he's still a white belt. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, he's not enough time on the vitamins yet. Right, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it, you know. Not enough development time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you turn 18 and then you just Hey, I don't care, man. They're group. all on it. You know, the, the, look at, yeah, look at all of them. The uh, baseball. Everybody stopped watching, you know. Who, what's baseball? Let them throw 150 miles an hour. Have no, exactly. <laughs> That's how they get it. You got the pitcher. He's got one giant arm because of all this. He just injects it directly into his bicep. Yeah, he's and elbow. 150. The guy hits it 700 feet. You know, who cares? <laughs> He kills the third base coach on a foul ball. There's not going to be catchers that can catch him anymore. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Moving on. Uh, Phil, tell us a little bit about your uh, venture into takedowns lately. Yeah, so there has been a challenge trying to figure out how to, specifically no gi, because in the gi I feel like I can just stall a lot and like pull someone to the ground because there's so many things to grab. Uh, I like the collar drag. I've had some success with that. And I've never been like judo thrown, I guess. Like that would be where my opinion probably immediately shifts um, because the guy that in Nogi who lifted me up and dropped me on my butt makes me, you know, want to address that problem. So I guess if somebody threw me on my head, there'd be a change of plans, but that just doesn't seem to happen right? yet. So sure. That, didn't seem high on the priority list so nogi just really feel lost mm. um and i know i worked with your your nephew nick before where is he isn't he supposed to be here nick is out of town this weekend yeah, so okay. my nephew nick just for an update for the audience uh he is a travel nurse and uh he lived with me about a year and a half ago two years ago it was before covid and um and he's back down here on an, in the charlotte area for another travel assignment so He's staying here again. So Nick's got his own personal um, takedown coach. Phil does. Oh, Phil does. Nick Sorry. is the coach. No, Nick is yeah. the coach. So I worked with him a while back, and that was helpful, and I learned a few sure. things. But I don't – I just avoid it, and I don't practice it. Um, so I've been seeking out times where there's not a full class uh, because that will make me not feel comfortable anyway because I don't want to, like, run over somebody – because I'm out of control because I don't know what I'm doing because I'm it's true. spazzy standing up because I have no idea what's going on. So, uh, yeah, just trying to figure some of that stuff out. Find a couple of things I like to try and try to drill them a little bit every day. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you have been doing good at that. Uh, try to – and then try to do it because that's the other hard part is – and then I start standing and I don't do things because mm-hmm. uh, too much thinking, not enough doing. I like um I like your approach. I think it's effective. I think that that what it's going to pay big dividends for you in, in no gi for sure. What I find funny about when you're doing it is on takedowns and it's whenever you're going with somebody else. Now here I'm drilling this, but I'm screwing it up because of this to someone. Um no. You're not screwing it up because of what you said you screwed it up for. You screwed it up three steps before that. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you why why do you why do you think that that's where it's at? It's just where the breakdown is is what you're pointing out, not where you're screwing it up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you're. Like when I'm telling you about what I'm talking to Sai about? No, no. Well, that and, I mean, just when I do just, with you? just whenever you go with me, it like you, you go into that drop down and you're like, I'm not, I just, I'm screwing it up. I'm not getting in deep enough. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. And you're like, okay. And I'm like, you're, you're half ass in the, the arm drag mm-hmm. and you're expecting yourself because that's the off balance, right? That's the off balance. So mm-hmm. you have to pull it into it. I just think it's funny that, that that's. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. I know. Yeah. But yet you're like, you're like, this is what I'm screwing up. But it's not. Okay. That makes sense. But I think I'm screwing both of them up, right? Well, yeah, but it's just, it's, I, I don't know why it's so funny to me that, that like, like. And you continually do it. <laughs> I do it in everything. I, know. I, do, yeah, I, I, I problem solve backwards. Good, that is a good point. I, I can only see the immediate problem. If I knew to arm drag, 
You know what I mean? Like if I knew to arm drag better in, uh, right off the rip, I probably wouldn't have had as much trouble going in deeper. That makes sense. So I could, or I guess I can see, I don't know the words, the symptom or whatever, but I don't you know. You can't the see the symptom. You, 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 you wait, you, whatever, s- I, you see the, I see the problem, but not yeah, like the cause of it. You know, let's get a doctor on one day, but yeah, I get, like I know <laughs> I have a headache, but I can't see that I haven't had any water in four days, you know? Or so, you ate 24 cookies yesterday. Yeah. We don't need to be specific. It could have been any amount, but, um, <laughs> but it was 24, right? Specifically one box, of <laughs> two dozen. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think that's just how I, I try to approach problem solving, but I, I like I know, that you pointed you that out. You convince me sometimes, or you used to convince me Yeah, that well, that was your, pro- like, that's what I'm getting at. Like okay, you used to okay. convince me, you'd be like, this is my problem. I'm like, oh, that's his problem. So let's address it. It's not, yeah. that wasn't it. Well, I like that you pointed that out with Cy because I did, um, <laughs> because like sprawling is something like I've never done it. Like I don't sure. practice it. Yeah, yeah. I maybe have seen that in class like two or three times, mm-hmm. like where you kind of sprawl and go to the back or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's different when like someone's good at getting a single leg, you know? So he's doing it and I'm telling him to me, like what I can see where like I immediately do something. I'm like, well, it seems like this is wrong. And he's like, okay. And I'm, I was like, well, I'm asking you, I need you to tell me because like, I don't know. I then interjected and said, Sai, it's never what, what he's saying is wrong is never what's wrong. It's always five steps before that. Yeah. And when I ask those questions though, and I'm like, Oh, Hey Brent or John, how do I stop you from reaching under my leg and passing the same way every time? They're like, Oh, you gotta, you know, you gotta address that grip. And I'm like, I think I just need to like shrimp out further, throw my leg (laughs) over. (laughs) Because we've already determined that you're not going to address the grip. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> and then in six months to a year, I figure that out. And then I look at someone else. I'm like, you just really need to address, address that grip right <laughs> off the rip. And it'll solve all your problems. So that's uh, where we are. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. And it's true, though. I mean, I think everybody does it, though, too. I, I mean, I not, think it's all you can do. Not quite to... Not quite to the uh, funny extent that you do it, mm-hmm. but definitely <laughs> Ryan Hall back take. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's good. I, I I'll tell you, man. That that's that, I'm glad you're addressing the stand up. I think it's a, an important part of Nogi. I I I've said it before. I don't. I really man. Haters gonna hate, but I stand up in in gi jiu-jitsu it's it just doesn't seem to be worth it to me to really focus on it mm-hmm. uh, but no gi i, I kind of tend to agree with so. yeah well I, I also don't really understand how to like how you would pull guard with no gi like it seems well you saw that one where they're touching hands and sitting down touching yeah. hands. <laughs> yeah i saw that yeah that seems hard but I like to be, I like to try to pass. And I feel like the way that I try to pass by forcing half guard and stuff seems to work better in Nogi because um, people don't have things to grab on me. And I'm not really grabbing lapels a lot. Uh, like the stack style passing, I don't really tend to do. I do more um, like the, I guess the knee cut, you, you do grab the sleeves and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I like Nogi more. I'm just going to keep finding reasons why I like it. And yeah. I'll just keep making things up as I go. Yeah, Nogi's fun. For sure. For sure. Uh, how many days a week are you doing Nogi? One? Just one. Just one. Okay. And, well, I guess we do I try some. To, I try to make most of my we'll grips. I think about the grips a lot, though, even when I have the gi on. And there'll be sometimes I'll be holding the sleeve and I'll think about it and I'll switch to just grab a wrist anyway um to just work on that stuff as it's like there's to me there's no reason i can't work on like making the same grips the same way but even though it's easier to hold certain things just with the friction of the of the gi and just like if i have something like in my elbow or whatever it's easier well you know uh byron jabara from the bjj brick you know he he he's he's often stay he trains both gi and no gi whatever whatever his training days are 
but he he states his gi game is just a lot like his nogi game because he prefers nogi and he doesn't really work on stuff with the gi chokes and and i think a couple things that he said kind of it made sense to me and that is that a you're going to be better at doing the the grips nogi if you if you work on them in the gi too and b his fingers aren't getting screwed up because of really latching on to the gi i mean you can really screw a finger up by doing that yeah when i only held on to the collar like this is my entire plan uh my fingers would hurt so bad that like for that year that you had that plan yeah (laughs) well and then when and manny was like oh yeah just stick your hands in ice water and i was like okay so my hands hurt so i'll try that and that was the most miserable thing i've ever done in my life so i was like oh figure something else out so did that it was miserable yeah i don't ever want to dunk my hands in ice again so like i do a sleeve grip and if you break it once that's it. It's gone. Not grabbing Get the sleeve out. again. Like I'll do that once a week. I'll hold on to a sleeve too hard, and I'm like, oh, that's good. I'm done with that. I hate uh, that. Yeah. 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 Uh. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't imagine. Like, I guess. I guess you get better at it, you know, and like stronger so they don't break the grip so it doesn't hurt as bad. But like, I can't imagine trying to do the spider guard stuff all the time. We're always relying on the the sleeve for all the time. That would, That'd be tough, man. I just don't, I don't have any interest in, in that. That'd be tough. You know, what's interesting though, um, is the lapel stuff, you know, the warm It's bar. a different kind of grip. It is, cause man. Cause I'm squeezing with my, it's, like a closing, it's easier, not a, isn't not it? hooking It's not just fingers. me, is it? Yeah, no, that, well, cause it doesn't, and when they break it and they pull it out of my hand, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. That's you what know, I'm like, saying. Like, I, it's, like, I feel like it's easier on your hands on, on, yeah. Then lapel, then standard lapel. Yeah, it's kind of like when you're grips. choking from the back. Like they pull my hands off that grip, like out of that opening, and it's not painful. Right. When I have like that hooked in sleeve grip and they pull it off or like hooked in pants and they rip it off, it hurts. I'm not, it does. I have no interest. You're right. So, Philly, let's talk about the belt promotion. Okay. Superpowers now that you got a purple belt? Unstoppable. <laughs> you are. Yeah. I've seen it. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So nothing changed. Been unstoppable. Stayed unstoppable. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. It was kind of weird. I don't know. What? What was weird? It was just a different belt. Feels weird for a while. Yeah. You know. But. Um. Yeah. No. No real superpowers. Everything feels pretty much where it was. Yeah. So. Yeah, congratulations to uh, for, to you, to Delvin, to Vincent, Eric, um, Gus, and then uh, Larry, who also fixed my rear naked choke, mm-hmm. got promoted to brown belt. So that was that was awesome. It was good to see those guys. It was good to see them progress. Um, you know, we took the test, and it, the test was a miserable test. I don't know how much we'll go into, but it was just very hot, and it was miserable. Yeah, it was and, very hot. And... Uh, and the good news was that I fixed all the stuff that I screwed up the time before when I tested, but then I screwed up a bunch of other stuff. So I didn't pass it. You know, I'm working on that stuff. It it was tough. You know, um, the test was tough. It was tough. Uh, you know, you and I talked to, uh, about it. It was uh, after it happened, you know, just to kind of get a game plan. I mean, that's what good friends do is they, they come, you know, get a game plan. What are we going to do to to make your jujitsu better, you know? And, uh, and it's tough that really you, you kind of pointed it out. And I think I agree with you in that, in that this has probably been one of my few struggles that I've had with jujitsu. Right. You know, that was what I, like it was bittersweet the day of, obviously, cause you know, you want everybody to succeed together. Sure. Um, but thinking about it afterwards, like, I mean, I don't know. I didn't watch your test, obviously. As I'm yeah, you were testing. It was 115 degrees. <laughs> so, and it was so all I, you can do to just pay attention to what the hell you're yeah, doing. And sometimes I lost to, fo- focus of that, too. There was a, yeah, there was a minute where I think we were doing hip pumps or kimonos. And then they switched it. And I started to do the other thing again halfway. And I was like, <laughs> oh, brain shut off for a minute. Uh, <laughs> I had plenty of those moments, man. Plenty. The, um, but I was thinking about it afterwards and I was like, you know, you really haven't had that many things in jujitsu that you would call struggle. I mean, like there's people that 
I mean, it's all a struggle, and I don't want everybody to think, oh, it's easy. It's not easy. It's not easy for me, and I, st- I still suck at it. But I mean, it, but com- comparatively to peers, you've always um, – it's just the way it is. You've just had more success against peers from the jump. And live training, that's just how it's worked. Now you run into somebody with much more experience and you don't win, but like that's not even disappointing because you're not supposed to. Right. So like it's kind of like a a win win. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, you just haven't had those frustrations that um other people have. Mm-hmm. And I always go back to like, well, you wrestled for ten years or whatever. Like that's a that's an investment and so is like when you think of somebody who's like super strong, it's like they just trained differently. Like they didn't just not born with it, you know, just walk in and can lift those amounts of weight and it's just different training. And now mm-hmm. you're changing it to apply somewhere else. So wrestling for a long time matters and you have it a does. lot of like ingrained habits and understanding that, you know, I don't have when I walk in and I don't think about the things the same way just cause I don't have any, experience with it um so like the struggle just has been different and so again it's just interesting because even competing because i was thinking back to like pans and like yeah that was a blow to me but i you know i would argue you didn't even really train for pans you did pans because i asked you to no you're right like so yeah you didn't win but like you you didn't want to do it. True. At first, you agreed to do it. Not to say you like weren't trying, but like we didn't approach pans with the same. Oh, for sure. But not. like, no, you I know, was just doing it because you know I wanted to support you in that. I mean, right. I didn't, yeah, I didn't. I wasn't like you didn't I uh, wasn't hyped change. For... <laughs> you didn't change your training. You weren't focused. No. You weren't training on this because pans is coming up. Right. You know, you you have continued to train the same way you know, the whole time. And, you know, I, that's why that was more of a hit to me because I spent eight or nine months specifically working on a game plan, trying to improve at those things to do those things at hands and it didn't work. So that was, yeah, you know, so again, so just thinking of the struggles and, and things that I feel this is the first time you're kind of being pushed through a spot where it does suck or doing something that you don't think is fun. Cause you've always pushed everybody else like into at least thinking about it where it's like, you don't like to do this. Well, maybe that's what you should be doing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's just from my perspective, as much as it sucks to see somebody not get what they're working at, it's, I don't know if interesting is the right word, best word or whatever, but it's something different to see you struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it was important. uh, And and again, I really appreciated it whenever you came over, you know, I left pretty early on. I congratulated everyone on their promotions. I was very happy for all all those people. It's just so well deserved. They worked hard, hard, hard for it. And uh, and I left early. You know, I was bummed. You know, it was. I mean, there's there's no way around it. It doesn't. Like, and I've said it before. I really don't care what belts around my waist. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not something that's a motivating factor for me. Training jujitsu is the motivating factor for me. It's not that, but you know, it's, you know, professors and instructors, they do things for a reason. Like, like, um, you know, there is a deficit in, and for any of those, you know, people ask or, or ask you because they're not comfortable asking me well, what what happened why didn't Jeff pass the fact is the onus is on me I w- I didn't know the I didn't know the techniques well enough um and you know I didn't I didn't commit to what was necessary to be proficient as others did in that in those and now you know i think it was a great game plan that, that you kind of helped me come up with really you came up with it not it wasn't really me it was you but of you know doing a private lesson with john every other week we just started those this week and it was great i mean it was really good just doing the stuff from from what the test material is so so yeah i mean you know it's it's going to be uh six months of doing doing that every other week i'm i'm incorporating incorporating a lot more i think i think already i would do 60 percent of what we 
have on that blue belt list that, that we 65. You think 65? I would say you do 65, yeah. Enroll? Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with you, Phil. Just, we have to be exact yeah. with numbers. <laughs> 63 and a half. Um, but, but, you know, I think I do a lot of, but now I'm starting to do the stuff that I, I never did because I, I don't know. There was, you know, there's, there's five, four half guard escapes that we have to know. And, you, you know, if you know two of them, you're in pretty good shit. You know what I mean? If you do, you do, I do two of them. Now I'm going to have to do four of them, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, so just stuff like that in rolling to make my rolling kind of more intentional of, of developing those fundamental techniques better. Uh, uh, and it'll work, you know, whenever it works and, and, you know, it, uh, it's not, it's not really my job to, to worry about promotions. That's, it's really, that's really John's and Steve's job. That's that I have nothing to do with that. That's how I felt like, after the test when yeah. everybody said, how do you feel about it? It's kind of like I did what I did. I'm good at some stuff. I'm not good at other stuff. And yeah. it's out of my hands now. Yeah. But though you were really, you know, whenever we went over all this stuff the day before you were really tight on it. I mean, you really, I mean, you work hard, you worked hard on that stuff and you, you really understand. And you brought up a good point, you know, also to come to more of the kids classes because it, it is that it's that exact curriculum that mm-hmm. they're they're teaching in a, in a much simpler way really whenever they do it so i'm gonna try to make at least one kids class a week you know, i've been doing that but um but yeah that'll that'll help so so no mystery no mystery behind i assume it was because they couldn't figure out why you did everything left-handed <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious oh, i can't remember what we were going over but in my private lesson with john yesterday He's asked me this no less a than I think a thousand times. Too. He goes, "Why are you doing this left handed?" I'm like, "Because um, I'm left handed, John." He's like, "Oh, he's like, yeah." I ask you that every time, don't I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but some, you know, I don't know why I don't start everything out left handed. I just do it regular. But then, whenever I do it rolling or something, it always I always gravitate towards doing it left handed, whatever it is. Yeah, the only thing I think I do. Well, I guess I do everything from the guard seems to be backwards. A lot of people like to play with their left hand in the collar because their right hand is like their, like Brent always calls it like the fine motor skills. Like you do your writing and you're better at like. People like to play with the left hand in the collar? Yeah, a lot of people seem to. I like to play with the right hand. And I hip bump sweep Kimura and guillotine all with my right hand. So I go left on the hip bump. Most people go to the right. But I want to grab the head with my right hand. So I always, I've always gone to the left. This was not planned. It just uh-huh. happened to work out. But, like, I like to hip bump to the left. Most people like to go to the right. Wait, so you're going with your left arm over their arm or right arm Right over? arm over. Oh, like that is weird. Yeah, because I do left arm over. Okay. Yeah. But hmm. that's the way most people go. But to me, it makes yeah. sense that you would go that way. Because then if your hip bump gets stuffed, you sit back and you're, I'm ch- I can't guillotine with, with my left hand nearly as tight as I can with my right hand. So it makes sense why you do it to the left side. Okay. It makes sense, but it's not why I did it. Yeah. Like that is just a happy accident. Like there's no. I feel like it's subconsciously. You definitely thought of that subconsciously. I don't think so. (laughs) No. No. No, that was just luck. All right. Because I, and I scissor sweep that way too. When, when it makes more sense to scissor sweep with your left leg on top, because that's the direction people want to try to pass to. So you're not fighting against that as much. Yeah. However, when I I try to scissor sweep to that direction either, it makes more sense to do it that way because that's the way people want to go. My, when my scissor sweep works, it's because like I'm sitting in that like position and someone tries to go to the side and I knock them over. Yeah. Yeah. Or they try to get in that combat base position and you just. Yeah, my, yeah, when I try to do a scissor sweep like from the closed guard, and the person's like, "No, it's that never happens. Like it never yeah. works that way." Yeah. So I've I've so when it's taught in class, I scissor sweep both directions now, because the right leg is the better one, so I try to keep that one good, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And but I'm trying to like build some muscle memory going to the left because, like, I'm always in that like half guard kind of knee shield position that uh-huh. like if I could figure out how to scissor sweep left, that's the way people want to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's always how it happens. Hmm. Interesting. Well, 
but I prefer to really let them base into the floor, widen out their base and just <laughs> sit there, really, really try to power around. through, you know, <laughs> works real good. <laughs> Use of the muscle and size. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you? yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. What else? What else are you working on now, Phil? Most of the standing stuff, because that's where, I don't know, I've been talking about doing Nogi Worlds, and then an IBJJF in Charlotte got announced. Um, October 3rd? 2nd, Saturday, I think. Uh, Molly's birthday, so happy birthday. Happy birthday, Molly. (laughs) I'm competing. (laughs) (laughs) uh, She has has something planned on my birthday. I think it's like Ethan's first day of school, so she's going to stay down in South Carolina. And I was like, oh, so you're going to do that on my birthday? Like, joking around. She's like, you're competing on mine. And I was like... All right. Too sure enough. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so they announced that because I, w- I was thinking about doing the Nogi Worlds. Um, mm-hmm. And that's December. Is, is that right? No, it's October 10th. October 10th, Nogi Worlds? Yeah. It's the week after. Oh, that's right. Because yeah, so I'll be uh, elk hunting. Yes. That so you week. weren't going to be able to go. So that. Yeah. So when you said you can't go, I was kind of like, eh. Um, but then they announced the one in Charlotte the week before. So I've been kind of thinking about that. But. I was talking about it the other day. I don't like, I've been helping my uncle stuff a lot mm-hmm. and I just feel like I'm not focusing on jujitsu nearly as much as I was. Like, I feel like I was in a really good groove and now I feel like I'm not, you know? Oh, you mean you're not thinking about jujitsu all of your waking hours now? Right. Yeah. Like yeah. I have this six hour, it's not even a full day really. Mm-hmm. I have this six hour block where I'm thinking about other stuff, but the That's problem is bullshit, when I leave, I'm also still thinking about that and they'll like text me and I'll uh, go to the computer. You know what I mean? So yeah. like there's been a lot of, uh, the more I think about it, I also think it's probably related to I'm focusing so much on takedowns. So mm-hmm. like, I don't see any improvement because I'm doing something I really suck at, you know, there's already been market improvement. Yeah. I don't see that though. Oh no. You know what I mean? No, you were terrible when you started. I mean, I'm so, yeah, I feel like that probably plays a bigger role than I'm realizing, but I just don't have that same, like I want to compete at the moment. Sure. And I, I don't know if it's that distraction. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe. Cause I, mean, I feel like it's real pressure free right now. Because like I don't think I'm expected to go out and win in my current division now anyway, you know. No. So I feel like I get a free shot at some IBJJF reps with going through their stressful checking my sleeves process, which is the <laughs> hardest part, man. It's, it is such a. It's such so a, stressful. So weird, man. Yeah. So and, weird. Uh, it seems a little unnecessary, you know. But <laughs> whenever, whenever I go, and I took my belt. You know, my belt is that of a. What? How long have I been? three and a half year for a blue belt. And so it's a little bit worn, some would say. And so I went to take my belt to him to see if it would pass. I was, I was like this and I just like held my belt up and he was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> he was like, it's, that's not going to work. Yeah. Well, well, they ended up not checking my gi because of that. Cause I oh, just really? walked up and he yeah. like grabbed my belt and he was like, no, nah, get out of here. He's like, go buy one. I was like, what do I do? He's like, go buy one. I'm like, how much is this going to be? Conveniently, they had oh, it right there in like the lobby. Bullshit, so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like it would be a stress-free one if I win. Awesome. But like, I don't really expect to win. Um, yeah, I mean, you but the first, first, uh, first competition at, at Purple Belt, <laughs> IBJJF, and our, I'm sure a ton of people yeah. for Charlotte. I mean, that's one of the bigger ones, I, I think. You know, Charlotte, Atlanta, that sort of thing. But... But yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of good folks there. So that would be kind but of But I just yeah, I just haven't been I haven't been feeling it as far as like the drive. So I I had it going for a little while. I was, I was doing good with the um the fun pace training. Like I was training twice a day, but it was like super fun and stuff and now I'm my I, I just don't like the whole you gotta do stuff during the day. You know, yeah. it really, really screws up the rest of my mm-hmm. my personal decision time you know what i want to do yeah so anyway (laughs) let's talk a little bit about um trying to get our cardio better yeah so my strategy is i've been eating like crap Mm -hmm. and then i'll go for a run Mm -hmm. because i figure if i can eat three donuts and then run like half a mile Mm -hmm. that almost like that wasn't half no, a mile. That no. was, it wasn't half. It was maybe a quarter, quarter mile. mile. <laughs> quarter it was maybe mile. a quarter mile. I walked a little bit of it. And I mean, it was almost 
my, like, it was not my sprint, but like, like how we jog around the mat mm-hmm. much faster than that. Yeah. Yeah. So like I was, I was pushing myself cause I wanted to see like how far can I run? Cause I know I hate running. You were like Usain bolting it to mm. as far as you could. Huh? Essentially. Yeah. hundred yeah, yards or so. Quarter speed. <laughs> and, uh, maybe, um, yeah, that really sucked. But I figure if I can do that while eating donuts, <laughs> that when I eliminate these donuts, I'm going to be unstoppable. <laughs> Sound uh, it's reasoning. It's like a, you know what I mean? Like Sound reasoning. Just taking the weights off and yeah, letting it fly. Yep. Um, I don't know, man. I always, I get in the, I train all the time and I'm not that tired. Yeah. Like I'll be tired at the end. Yeah. And there'll be rounds where I kind of get tired, but I'm never as tired as I am when I'm competing. Yeah. And then when I'm training and stuff, I'm always like, yeah, well, I can, I could push a little harder, but then I don't. Yeah. You know? And then I need to in a competition and I'm like, Hmm. you know, this would be a good time to do something. If you could. And I can't, and I don't. Right. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, maybe that's part of the reason I haven't been in competing because I know I need to do that and I'm not (laughs) doing it as much as I should be. Could be. And then I, I'm working on my cardio with that godforsaken rogue echo bike. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. I told you it's terrible. I told you I did the, I did one time on that thing. I called Phil bad names because he said, he said, yeah, I'm just going to do it for a minute at a time. I'm like, come on. What's wrong with you? Wuss. <laughs> Then I immediately went out there and did it for a minute. I was like, oh, God, this is horrible. It's so hard. It's so hard. Like, I don't even, I, I don't, I don't know how it gets any harder than that. Yeah, like, I don't know. Literally 20 seconds and on, on that echo. And here's what I've been trying to do. Cause you know, I don't want to cheat myself on it. Like I've got to be at least. Like full out sprint as as fast as I can literally go is thirty one miles an hour. Where That's, does it tell you that? Um, I I fixed the oh okay I fixed the thing so okay. it, it's um it's now got the readout on it and it's also got that uh, twenty ten program. Oh, uh, you got it all set up. Yeah, it's all okay. set up. Okay. Super easy. But so so I I I literally before I did it I was like all right I'm I'm seeing how fast that I can physically do this so like 31.8 miles an hour i think is what as fast as i could get it and so i was like all right well i've got to at least stay at 28 miles an hour like for the entire time yeah you know for that entire 20 seconds it takes it takes like three four seconds to get up to that but i don't worry about that just it's that i get up there and i have to stay over 28 for that 20 seconds and it's rough it's rough and then i I go back down to like eight miles an hour like out on the 10 seconds which that 10 seconds is no rest no it's zero rest i don't know how that works because the 20 seconds of going is like four and a half minutes and then your 10 seconds is it's just like it never even happened yeah i'm not quite sure how never even happened that Math Seems like works an hour, out. not four and a half minutes. Seems like an hour. It's terrible. Twenty seconds. It's terrible. It's awful. I honestly haven't felt like anything like that since I first started trying to like lose weight. And they did these things on the floor called like an L sit, uh-huh. where you like you lift your butt yep. up and like hold your legs off the floor. And I would try to do that for thirty seconds. And that was the oh. only of the exercises that were like miserable. Yeah. But I would like try to get to 30 seconds or whatever. And then eventually it became easy. I mm-hmm. just don't think the bike ever becomes easy. I, there's no way. I don't see it. It no. like, seems way worse than that. No. It's the only thing I can compare. Guys, like you see Rafael Lovato Jr. doing the same thing and he's miserable. I'm like, how am I going to get good at this yeah. if he's miserable? I mean, that dude's in shape. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. So here was my plan, Phil. So now I do one minute on the echo bike, 10 minutes in the sauna, one minute on the echo bike, 10 minutes in the sauna. I feel like that's just going to give you a heart attack. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Now, how many heart attacks do you get? I mean, I don't know. 
I'm looking to blow that. I'm blowing those arteries out. I figure if I can do this, while it, first off, does that not disrupt it's 90 the effects degrees of the out sauna? In my garage? Yeah, it's first. It's terrible outside. Second, it's 150 in the sauna, and I'm soaking wet. And honestly, sometimes I'm doing it naked. It does. <laughs> It's quite a sight. Uh, <laughs> does doors close? You know, does um, the um the, the glass door? The, <laughs> does getting out of the sauna like reduce sauna effects because you're like breaking the heat? I don't care. This is about cardio. Okay. You not know what sa- I mean? Not sauna benefits then. I mean, it definitely is about sauna benefits because I'm I, I'm still you know I'm still spending forty minutes in the sauna. Yeah, but that's not the same as spending 40 minutes. Yeah, but I'm hot as hell whenever I'm... It's 90 degrees in the freaking garage, and my body temperature is definitely not coming out down any. I'm not saying... Yeah. Although that Echo Bike does throw a giant fan on you. Like, I get... I do... I do get... uh, Yeah. I'm just wondering if like you're kind of... It sounds shitty. Like, I'm not saying it's easy by any means. I just wonder if you're working against yourself. Like, it would be better to do, like... 10 minutes in the sauna and then hit the bike for your four or five minutes or whatever, and then do 30 minutes in the sauna after, you know what I mean? So you have like a extended period of the super high temperature. I don't know. I'm not, Phil, a I have no basis for what I'm doing. Yeah. Zero. It sounds terrible. It just, you know what my basis was? This, this sounds, is going to be fucking miserable. Yeah. Let's yeah. try it. Yeah. That was my basis for it. That's what I did. The like day I, I have no idea. Like, if there's anybody that's listening on the show that knows about interval this training. This must be so funny. To somebody who has like a background. They're probably like, these guys are fucking idiots. Like, you know, when you go on YouTube and like you see somebody like bouncing on a trampoline, but like holding weights or something stupid. Yeah. You know, that's like what you're doing right now. Of I'm course kidding. it is. I have, and there's no foundation for anything that I'm trying other than it's utter misery. And I think that there's. there's also comment on the donut sprints if you have thoughts on that. So feel free. Uh, well, I see the donuts as your ankle weights is what I see. That's them what as. I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, that's your ankle. Yeah. Once you take those ankle weights off, boom, you're how long untethered. Does it take the, like a week of eating clean to clear out the arteries. Right. That's, that's how it works. That's probably six yeah, to eight probably months accurate. of pure junk Again, and then a week any clean. Any dietitian or anybody who knows anything the about nutrition. <laughs> do a cleanse. Please do not pay attention to us. I mean, for that matter, nobody pay attention to us because we really, there's nothing we have to add to much of anything. Yeah, so I'm just going to eat the donuts anyway. So I've just found a way to make it sound like it's helpful, you know? Mm. I believe that's Mm. called uh, being a sugar addict. Yeah, So yeah, I think you're right. That's what it is. I just, I'm really lucky my hobby sheds all the sugar off through sweat. That's right. So you're right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. That's great. All right, Phil. Tell the folks out there if they choose to do so, how they can support us. Um, Share the podcast with a friend yes. and buy a clearance rash guard. Clearance rash guard what for those 155 and lower. That's right. Right? Is that what we got? Mediums? Medium, yeah. Yeah, medium. Okay. Uh, most comfortable rash guard there is, folks. Um, uh, and uh, if you see fit to, uh, go out there and review the podcast. I mean, only if it's going to be positive. We don't want negative Nellies on there. Um <laughs> <laughs> And if you're not doing something each and every day to make yourself better, get out there and do it. Phil and I choose jujitsu. We hope you do too. I'm about to feed them to the sharks right now. Get them hyped right now. Yeah. You know the ground is up. Yeah. Everybody that trains, you know the game. Yeah. So let's get it. Uh. Slap it up, bump it and roll. Hey. Yeah, that's the way that it go. Ain't no better way to better yourself in this game. You're feeling the growth. That's, That's time on the mat. We put in the work. Believe it ain't easy, I know. You know. But we train for the love of the game, the love of the art. Now slap it up, bump it, let's roll. Let's roll.